Well, this weekend, Pope Francis travels to Fatima, Portugal, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of a mysterious apparition that appeared there to three children, three village children. The children believe the apparition to be the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. Doomsday predictions have been around for centuries, but none have captivated the Catholic Church quite like the third secret of Fatima. For decades, the Vatican has kept its contents hidden, shrouded in mystery. But what if those secrets point to a terrifying truth about 2024? Could a prophecy from 1917 hold the key to humanity's fate? Why is the church so afraid of what the third secret reveals? And what does it mean for you in 2024? Stick around as we crack open the vault and delve into the chilling secrets of Fatima. This might just be the most important message you hear all year. You're not frightened now, are you? No. Where does your excellency come from? I am from heaven. Unraveling the myths and mysteries surrounding the Fatima prophecies. Centuries ago, a seismic event shook the small village of Fatima, Portugal, as three children witnessed an extraordinary apparition that would reverberate through the ages. Known as the Miracle of Fatima, the children claimed that the Blessed Virgin Mary had shared three secrets with them, foretelling a tumultuous future for the world. In the decades that followed, the contents of the three secrets remained shrouded in secrecy, keeping the world in suspense. However, in the 1940s, Sister Lucia, one of the three children who witnessed the apparition, broke the veil of silence by publishing her memoirs. In her writings, she disclosed the first two secrets, igniting a firestorm of speculation around the final, enigmatic prophecy. What revelations lay in store in the third secret, and why was it so closely guarded? To understand this, we will have to look at the first and second secrets. The first secret. In her third memoir, written in 1941, Lucia shared the first secret of Fatima, which unfolded on the ominous date of July 13, 1917. It all began with a revelation so profound, it shook the very essence of the children's souls. She revealed that Mary unveiled a sight so terrifying it felt as though the earth itself quivered in fear. Before their innocent eyes lay a vast expanse of fire, a sea of flames raging beneath the earth's surface. Within this inferno writhed demons, their forms twisted and contorted into shapes both grotesque and monstrous. Yet alongside these dark entities, were souls, human in form, but consumed by the fiery abyss, their bodies mere embers glowing with a haunting brilliance. Souls were getting tossed and turned amidst the flames, rising and falling like fiery phoenixes, their anguished cries piercing the very fabric of existence. The air was thick with smoke, clouds billowing forth from the very depths of their torment. Each moment brought fresh waves of terror as the children witnessed this harrowing spectacle. But amidst the chaos, there was a glimmer of hope, a promise whispered by their heavenly mother in the first apparition, a pledge that she would guide them safely to heaven's embrace. It was this assurance that anchored their trembling hearts, preventing them from succumbing to the overwhelming fear that threatened to engulf them. Yet even as they clung to this promise, the memory of that vision lingered like a specter, a reminder of the fragility of existence and the reality of eternal damnation. For how can one forget the sight of hell itself laid bare before them, its horrors etched into their very souls? And so, as they reflected on that fateful day, gratitude swelled within them, a profound appreciation for their kind Heavenly Mother who had shielded them from the full force of that terror. Without her guiding hand, they knew not what fate would have befallen them in the face of such unbridled horror. But as the days passed and the memory of that vision faded into the recesses of their minds, one question remained. What other secrets lay hidden within the depths of Fatima? What mysteries awaited their discovery, lurking just beyond the horizon, ready to unveil themselves in due time? Well, it was the second secret. The second secret. On the same day that the first secret was revealed, the second secret was partly revealed to the children, focusing on devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It included prophecies tied to this devotion, 
foreseeing the end of World War I and the potential outbreak of another conflict during Pope Pius VII's reign if humanity continued to offend God and if Russia didn't convert. The second part of the secret urged for Russia's consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. According to the revelations, the Virgin Mary showed the children a vision of hell, emphasizing the plight of sinners. To avert this, God desired the establishment of devotion to her Immaculate Heart in the world. Compliance with her requests would lead to the salvation of many souls and bring about peace. Although the ongoing war would cease, failure to cease offending God would provoke a more devastating conflict during Pope Pius VII's pontificate. A prophetic sign of an unknown light illuminating the night sky would herald impending divine punishment through war, famine, and persecution of the Church and its leader. To prevent such calamities, the Virgin Mary promised to return and request the consecration of Russia to her Immaculate Heart, along with Reparation Communion on the first Saturday. If these requests were honored, Russia would convert and peace would prevail. However, if ignored, Russia would disseminate its errors worldwide, triggering wars and persecution against the Church. The consequences would include martyrdom for the righteous, significant suffering for the Holy Father, and the annihilation of several nations. Nonetheless, the Virgin Mary assured that ultimately, her Immaculate Heart would triumph. The Holy Father would consecrate Russia to her, leading to its conversion and ushering in a period of global peace. She also revealed in her memoir that in 1925, she had another encounter with the Virgin Mary, this time at the convent of St. Dorothea in Pontevedra, Galicia. Here, Mary entrusted her with the message of the first Saturday devotions. Later, Sister Lucia claimed to have seen the child Jesus, who reinforced this request. Then, in 1930, she shared with her confessor a vision from 1929, where she witnessed Mary and the Holy Trinity. In this vision, God urged for the consecration of Russia to the sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary by the Pope, in unity with all the bishops worldwide. This vision fulfilled the prophecy made in 1917 about Mary's future request for consecration. The concept of the devotion of the five first Saturdays echoes a similar devotion revealed to Margaret Mary Alacoque in the 17th century which inspired the first Friday devotion. Though it's doubtful that Sister Lucia directly conveyed this message to the Pope, the Bishop of Laria suggested she document her experiences and insights in her memoirs. This would not only shed light on her cousin's involvement, but also provide further details about the apparitions of 1917. The unveiling of the second prophecy in August 1941, amidst the chaos of World War II, added another layer of mystery to the Fatima revelations. Skeptics questioned whether Mary's reference to Pope Pius VI in 1917 was accurate, considering he hadn't assumed that name until after his election in 1922. Moreover, World War II's European theater commenced in September 1939 under the pontificate of Pope Pius XIV, who succeeded Pius II. But was Pope Pius V that truly the one Mary was referring to in 1917? On the flip side, proponents of the Fatima prophecies offer alternative interpretations. They argue that the secret did not specify the war's location, and by the time of Pius VII's pontificate, Japan had already invaded China in 1937, marking the beginning of what some historians consider the true start of World War II. This viewpoint finds support not only in Eastern, but also in Western historical circles, adding complexity to the narrative. Critics counter these arguments by pointing to various conflicts that occurred between World War I and World War II. They highlight events like the Russian Civil War, the Irish War of Independence, the Chinese Civil War, Italy's War with Ethiopia, and the Spanish Civil War as examples of ongoing global turmoil. These conflicts, they argue, undermine the notion that the prediction of one war ending and another beginning is inherently divine. Proponents of the prophecy, however, maintain that the second secret's warning of a war more devastating than World War I suggests a specificity that transcends mere conjecture. They emphasize the profound impact such a conflict would have on humanity, underscoring the urgency of heeding Mary's message. 
Furthermore, regarding the conversion of Russia, historical context provides insight. Even before the Bolshevik Revolution of November 1917, Russia was experiencing significant political upheaval. The February Revolution earlier that year, along with active communist and anarchist movements, hinted at the country's brewing transformation. Mary's call for Russia's conversion on July 13, 1917, thus reflects the tumultuous socio-political climate of the time. The year 1938 witnessed a celestial spectacle that gripped Europe in fear and awe. The Aurora Borealis, an unusual sight in those regions, sparked panic as people fled in terror, mistaking the natural phenomenon for a raging fire. This event, observed from Canada to Bermuda to Austria to Scotland, disrupted shortwave radio transmissions for nearly 12 hours in Canada. Coincidentally, during this celestial display, Christian Rakovsky was undergoing interrogation in the Soviet Union, providing Stalin with information about Western involvement in Hitler's ascent and proposing an alliance against Germany. Soon after, Hitler's aggression escalated with the annexation of Austria and subsequent invasion of Czechoslovakia. Was that the revelation unfolding or there's still more to watch out for? Fast forward to 2022, the world witnessed another geopolitical upheaval with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. In response to this crisis, Pope Francis made a historic announcement, declaring his intention to consecrate both Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This symbolic act carried out on March 25, 2022, highlighted the enduring relevance of the Fatima prophecies and the ongoing pursuit of peace through divine intervention. The first and second secrets had already caused a stir, so when the third secret remained hidden, people started to wonder. There were so many questions like, if the first two secrets were so deep and scary, what could be in the third one? The third secret. In August 1941, Sister Lucia made a choice not to reveal the third secret in her memoir. Two years later, she fell seriously ill with influenza and pleurisy. When Bishop Silva visited her on September 15, 1943, he suggested she write down the secret to ensure its preservation in case of her passing. However, Lucia hesitated because she had heard Mary instructing her not to disclose it. This caused a dilemma for Lucia, as her Carmelite obedience dictated that orders from superiors be seen as God's will. Despite Bishop Silva's direct order in mid-October to record the secret, Lucia still struggled. It wasn't until early January 1944, after an apparition of the Virgin Mary, that Lucia resolved to write the secret as commanded, but not to interpret its meaning. Following Bishop Silva's directive, the third part of the secret was penned by order of His Excellency, the Bishop of Laria and the Most Holy Mother, on January 3, 1944. The sealed envelope containing the secret remained with Silva until June 1944 when it was sent to Rome, where it stayed until 1957. During this time, Canon Galamba, an advisor to the Bishop of Laria, recounted that Lucia had insisted the envelope be opened and the secret revealed to the world upon her death or by 1960, whichever came first. This sealed document, known as the Third Secret of Fatima, remained undisclosed until the year 2000. It was finally revealed on the day of the beatification of Francisco and Jacinta Marto, two children who witnessed the Marian apparitions in Fatima. Lucia, the witness to these events wrote the third part of the secret on July 13, 1917, in obedience to God's will conveyed through the Bishop of Laria and the Virgin Mary. In her narrative, Lucia described an apparition where she and her companions saw an angel holding a flaming sword. This angel, positioned to the left of the Virgin Mary and slightly above her, emitted flames that appeared capable of engulfing the world but were extinguished by the splendor emanating from Mary's hand. The angel's cry for penance echoed loudly, accompanied by a vision of a bishop dressed in white, resembling the Holy Father, along with other clergy and believers ascending a steep mountain. The journey of the Holy Father, marked by suffering and prayer, culminated in his martyrdom at the foot of a large cross atop the mountain. This martyrdom extended to other bishops, priests, religious figures, and lay people, symbolizing a period of persecution endured by the Church. For this third secret, supporters of Fatima went to great lengths for their beliefs, 
with some not eating and one person even taking over a plane to make the Vatican share this secret during Pope John Paul II's visit in 1982. On the year mark of an attempt on his life, a Spanish priest armed with a knife tried to attack the Pope, but was stopped by guards. Pope John Paul II always said the Virgin of Fatima saved him, showing his thanks by visiting the shrine in 1982. He placed a bullet taken from him into the Virgin's statue's crown in 1991. Ten years after the attack, he visited again to express gratitude for his life and the end of communism, which some believe the Virgin predicted in 1917. During a solemn visit, Cardinal Sodano announced, as directed by the Pope, that the pilgrimage was to show thanks to the Virgin for her protection. This protection is thought to be part of the third secret of Fatima. The Pope mentioned the prophecies, speaking of difficult times foretold at Fatima, but didn't talk about the third secret. Instead, he thanked God for saving him from the assassination attempt on May 13, 1981. This event is seen as proof of the Virgin's intervention, believed to have directed the bullet, saving the Pope's life on the 65th anniversary of Fatima's first appearance. The Pope found out about the secret shortly after becoming Pope in 1978. His spokesperson, Dr. Joaquim Navarro Valls, explained that the Pope didn't reveal it himself because of his personal connection. But accompanying the disclosure of the Fatima secret text, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, who would later become Pope Benedict XVI, penned a theological commentary debunking those claims. In it, he offered insights into the nature of the revelation. Ratzinger suggested that upon careful examination, the content of the so-called third secret may not live up to the extensive speculation it has generated. He emphasized that the revelation did not unveil a predetermined future, but rather served to inspire positive change. Ratzinger distinguished between public and private revelations, urging caution against interpreting the message as a fixed prophecy. He dismissed fatalistic interpretations, such as attributing the attempted assassination of May 13, 1981, to divine intervention, emphasizing human agency and the potential for redemption. Instead, he explained the vision's warning of impending dangers and the opportunity for salvation. Delving into the symbolic imagery of the revelation, Ratzinger acknowledged its resemblance to traditional religious motifs found in devotional literature. He highlighted the emphasis on prayer, penance, and conversion as central themes of the message. These elements, he suggested, are crucial for spiritual growth and collective redemption. But is this truly all that there is to the third secret, or there's more than meets the eye? The Controversy Concerning the Third Secret The strange delay in revealing the third secret, even after the 1981 assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II, remains a mystery. The Catholic Church, however, has continued to honor the memory of the two children who witnessed the apparition, Francisco and Jacinta Marto, by advancing them on the path to sainthood. This is a rare occurrence in the Church, as Francisco and Jacinta were not martyrs, but rather beatified for their heroic virtues. Does this mean the Church is finally seeing sense of what happened at Fatima? For years, the Vatican guarded the third secret of Fatima with immense secrecy, entrusting it solely to Lucia. This prolonged silence, coupled with the public's thirst for knowledge, led to a proliferation of theories and speculations, only intensifying the enigma surrounding the secret. While interpretations may differ, the core message of the secret delivered a grave warning. Humanity teetered on the brink of peril unless it acknowledged and repented for its sins. Then, in the volatile climate of the 1980s, Pope John Paul II's remarks about the third secret during a visit to Fulda, Germany, assumed a prophetic gravity. When asked about the contents of the secret, the Pope did not reveal its details, but he implied the potential for catastrophic consequences, urging people not to view the matter through the lens of mere curiosity or sensationalism. No doubt many sought to uncover the secret out of curiosity or a thirst for sensational revelations, overlooking the inherent responsibility that knowledge carries. Pope John Paul II emphasized the peril of pursuing knowledge solely for curiosity's sake, particularly if one feels powerless to prevent the prophesied catastrophe. 
Cardinal Ratzinger also indirectly acknowledged in an interview that the third secret contained dire warnings. He argued that revealing it wouldn't add essential knowledge for Christians. Instead, he expressed concerns about sensationalism and exploitation, implying prudently that the secret indeed held unsettling messages. Both John Paul II and Cardinal Ratzinger evaded direct answers, raising questions about why they didn't outright deny the existence of such alarming threats. A simple no would have calmed speculation, but their responses fueled ongoing debate. For decades, the world has been familiar with the core message of Fatima, repentance to avert great suffering. The Blessed Mother warned of impending punishment if humanity didn't turn away from sin, particularly sins of the flesh and troubled marriages. She cautioned that wars were divine retribution for worldly sins. When the Vatican finally disclosed what it claimed was the third secret in 2000, many found it underwhelming. The discrepancy between the urgent warnings of Fatima and the Vatican's portrayal as events already passed left people perplexed. Society seemed mired in corruption and evil, contrary to expectations of repentance and redemption. Rumors of a missing part of the third secret have circulated since the early 1960s. Allegedly, a segment of the text has circulated within certain church circles, purportedly shown to high-profile figures like the leaders of Russia and the United States during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Reports in German and French newspapers hinted at its contents, further fueling speculation. Despite challenges in verifying its authenticity, the document's alignment with church teachings and its eerie accuracy in reflecting contemporary global events demand serious consideration. This circulated text predates other revelations, adding to its intrigue and relevance. The circulated text, reportedly originating from the Third Secret, dates back to the early 1960s, preceding subsequent revelations such as the Akita revelations in 1973 and John Paul II's statement in Fulda in 1980. Its contents, purportedly revealed by Our Lady to Lucia, the Fatima visionary, resonate eerily with modern times. While the document's journey through various hands complicates its authentication, its consistency with church teachings and its prescient portrayal of contemporary events warrant careful examination. The consistency of the message across various sources adds weight to its importance. Despite the time frame mentioned in the text, referring to the second half of the 20th century, that time has passed. However, rather than dismissing the warnings as outdated, it's reasonable to believe that through Our Lady's intervention, the period of mercy has been extended. She doesn't warn us to instill fear but to inspire change through preaching, prayers, and penance, akin to Jonah's message to Nineveh. Another aspect worth noting is the reference to the conflict between cardinals and bishops with Satan among them. This aspect wasn't apparent in 2000, possibly explaining the Vatican's reluctance to disclose the message then. It seems to fulfill Our Lady's warning of significant changes in Rome, with corruption falling and confusion engulfing the world. The only element yet to unfold from the missing part of the third secret, perhaps due to God's mercy, is the punishment for these sins. Given the worsening state of affairs, this could manifest in various forms, from a global economic collapse to a catastrophic natural disaster like a meteor impact. Her warning draws parallels to biblical punishments like the flood during Noah's time and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, indicating that God communicates through similar warnings and actions to convey the gravity of sins and their consequences. In our current era, similar to the ancient city of Nineveh, if people disregard what Our Lady revealed to Sister Lucia of Fatima about the spread of sin and its dire consequences, they may face even greater woes, especially if things worsen. Father Alonso, an archivist who had access to the Fatima document and interacted with Sister Lucia, left us with crucial insights. He indicated that before the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, grave events would unfold. These events, constituting the third part of the secret, wouldn't be external conflicts like wars or natural disasters, but rather internal struggles within the Catholic Church itself. Father Alonso emphasized that in Portugal, the dogma of the faith would always be upheld, suggesting a crisis of faith elsewhere. The period preceding the triumph would witness these significant challenges. While Portugal would maintain its faith, other parts of the Church might experience obscurity, 
or even loss of essential doctrines. The unpublished part of the secret likely addresses a religious crisis and the negligence of church leaders. It doesn't predict new wars or political unrest, but focuses on graver religious and intra-church happenings. So, why is the church holding back the unpublished part of the secret, since it's something that all Christians should be aware of? Church authorities have endorsed Father Alonso's conclusions, affirming that the third secret involves an unparalleled loss of faith, with Portugal being an exception. In 1984, the Bishop of Fatima stressed that the loss of faith across a continent is more severe than the annihilation of a nation. Indeed, Europe has witnessed a continuous decline in faith. The fulfillment of the Third Secret's prophecy began unfolding around 1960. Sister Lucia had warned that the secret should be revealed no later than this because it would be clearer then and it seems like she was right. Since 1960, we've witnessed a progressive decline in faith, aligning with the prophecy. Father Alonso, in his book, The Secret of Fatima Fact and Legend, expanded on his hypothesis. He suggested that the secret not only addresses the crisis of faith within the church, but also highlights the negligence of church leaders, particularly within the upper hierarchy. He spoke of internal struggles within the church and grave pastoral neglect by senior clergy. Given Father Alonso's close relationship with Sister Lucy, it seems unlikely that he would have made such bold assertions about the contents of the third secret without first consulting with her. Not only was Father Alonso widely regarded as an authority on the Fatima apparitions, but he was also one of the few people with access to Sister Lucia. Amidst the swirling mystery surrounding the third secret, one thing is certain. Sister Lucia was not one to shy away from correcting false statements or misinterpretations about Fatima. As Canon Galamba and Bishop Dalva feared for her health in the summer of 1943, it seemed evident that Sister Lucia would have sought to set the record straight before potentially succumbing to illness, especially given the significance of the third secret. With Father Alonso, a trusted confidant of Sister Lucia and a respected authority on Fatima, it is difficult to believe that she would have allowed him to operate under erroneous assumptions without speaking up. Now, if you are wondering why people believe the complete third secret of Fatima hasn't been disclosed by the Catholic Church, I will tell you why. One reason is that it's believed that the third secret was originally written in the form of a letter to the Bishop of Laria. However, the text released by the Vatican isn't structured as a letter. Lucia, one of the children who experienced the Fatima apparitions, mentioned in an interview that she indeed communicated the third part in a letter to the bishop. Even Canon Galamba, an advisor to the bishop, affirmed that Lucia made sure the letter would be opened and shared with the world, either after her death or in 1960. So, what went wrong? Another intriguing aspect is the absence of direct words from the Blessed Virgin Mary in the text released by the Vatican. Critics argue that this omission is significant. They point out that Lucia hinted at the beginning of the third secret in her memoir, mentioning words like, in Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved, which are absent in the Vatican's released version. Lucia herself mentioned in her memoir that she wasn't going to unveil the third part, adding to the mystery surrounding its contents. Moreover, there are references to apocalyptic themes, apostasy, and satanic infiltration within the church, adding layers of complexity to the speculation. Cardinal Ratzinger, who later became Pope Benedict XVI, mentioned in an interview the importance of the Novissimi in the Third Secret. He highlighted the dangers to the faith and the Christian life, emphasizing the need to prevent religious prophecy from being sensationalized. This stance implies a delicate balance between revelation and interpretation within the church hierarchy. Additionally, insights from individuals like Howard D., a former Philippine ambassador to the Vatican, shed light on the perceived similarities between the Fatima and Akita prophecies. The Akita prophecy, which gained attention in the 1970s, foretells a time when the devil's influence would infiltrate the church causing internal conflicts among clergy members. This alignment between the messages of Fatima and Akita raises questions about the full scope of the Fatima prophecies and the church's stance on their disclosure. 
There are several potential reasons why the Vatican may be apprehensive about releasing the entire third secret. The first could be the fear of misinterpretation. The church could be concerned about the possibility that portions of the secret could be misunderstood or misconstrued, leading to confusion and fear among the faithful. Also, some believe that the church may be preserving the full secret to protect its essence, particularly if the revelation of specific details would jeopardize the message's spiritual significance. Regardless of the actual contents of the third secret, the overarching message of Fatima seems clear. It is vital for individuals to live righteous lives, maintaining a strong connection to their spiritual foundations, even in the face of potential adversity. While the truth of the third secret may remain shrouded in mystery, the core principles of the Fatima prophecies, the need for faith, penance, and prayer, endure as a timeless reminder to lead a virtuous life. Thank you for watching and don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the comment section and turn on your notification bell to stay up to date.